Good morning. My name is Tom Conkle. I am a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. And I wanted to take a few minutes today to talk about cybersecurity maturity standards uh, and common practices for, the, uh, for how we can implement cyber maturity capabilities. Um, so just as a quick overview of cyber maturity in of itself, um, cyber maturity is typically broken down into two uh, separate components. The first being uh, capability maturity or uh, the types of practices or things that we need to do in our cybersecurity program uh, to properly mitigate risks to our organization. Uh, capabilities typically range from basic cyber hygiene capabilities up to advanced capabilities that get more specific um, as we go up, <clears throat> go up through the capability model itself. Um, process maturity uh, typically are um, ident is used to identify how robust we need to define our security program. So a lot of small organizations might have uh, lower maturity processes, whereas you know word of mouth is okay and effective way of communicating expectations to the organization. Um, however, in most cases, uh, organizations require some degree of policy or standard to define what type of cyber cybersecurity capabilities are expected across the organization. And those policies help us uh, have that consistency throughout. Um, so those are the two components, but how do we learn how to leverage those? Well, there are several different leading um, standards out there today for cyber maturity that we can use. Um, each one of them slightly different than the others, uh, which is good because it gives us the opportunity to understand um, you know, how we want to implement it for our organization. Or in some cases, you may choose to pick two or three and either align them or just use components from each of them uh, as you develop your cyber maturity capabilities uh, within your or within your organization so um, I would like to talk about four of the most common ones um, that are out in industry today um, first is starting with the Center for Internet Security implementation groups so basically CIS um, established the implementation groups uh, with the rollout of version 7.1 the implementation groups are ways in which we can help understand the CIS controls and which priority we need to implement them uh, the implementation groups do cascade from themselves um, whereas implementation group one is included in implementation group two and so forth. Um, so for organizations that are just trying to um, start out on their cybersecurity program, um, not sure where to start, the implementation groups help us understand that prioritization of where to begin. So again, starting with the concept from basic hygiene, moving towards advanced capabilities, as well as they have um, capabilities in there from the process or the governance capability side so that we can understand how um, robust or how mature we need to have the definition of our cybersecurity program as we go up through the implementation groups. Okay, so as we can see here, CIS has three implementation groups. Um, they were developed from industry uh, consensus on what are the most basic things that need to be put in place and then how do we help organizations uh, mature their cybersecurity program as they uh, go up throughout the groups. Okay. The second um, cyber maturity capability standard I want to talk about is CMMIs. Um, CMMI has been doing uh, maturity models uh, for decades now. Um, many of you may be familiar with um, several of their maturity models, but back in 2017, CMMI actually developed a cybersecurity maturity model and implemented it in what they call their cyber maturity platform. The cyber maturity platform is simply a self assessment uh, tool that organizations can use to help. Uh, measure, understand their current maturity, and then uh, work towards improving it. So within the platform, it has a concept of cyber maturity that has a five-point scale, as you see here on the screen. Um, starting from a process standpoint of le level one that you're just performing some kind of capabilities and then growing to level three where you're defining those capabilities again in policies and procedures, all the way to five where you're optimizing your policies and procedures as appropriate. Uh, in addition, within the cyber maturity platform, CMMI has identified practices or capabilities for each of the levels that are appropriate across people, process, and technology so that you can understand not only what are the capabilities or the tools that you need to implement, but how can you improve training of your personnel um, and the, the process that need to be in place around the cybersecurity program itself. Okay, so, um, so we can see here already a little bit of difference difference between uh, CIS's three-point implementation groups and the five-point scale we have here from CMMI. Um, 
Another very similar um, model to CMMI's approach is the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification, or CMMC. Um, CMMC is an evolving cyber maturity capability that was just introduced um, earlier this year. Um, they have revision uh, revised it to version 1.02, uh, came out in March. Um, and as you can see here from figure two of CMMC, uh, they clearly de delineate uh, process maturity and practice practice maturity in of itself. Um, again, just like CMMI, we have a five point scale uh, level, starting at level one for performing capabilities to level three where they're being managed. Uh, and again, up to level five where they're being optimized. So the levels are very similar to CMMI, um, but they are slightly different in nuance. Um, um, when you get into them, but the general capabilities, general things that from a process standpoint that we need to understand are there, uh, are very similar between the two. Uh, CMMC also, again, just like the other maturity models, has uh, basic cyber hygiene capabilities at level one, and they have 17 practices, um, as they refer to them, that need to be implemented at level one. And that grows to 130 um, practices that need to be implemented for good cybersecurity hygiene and then all the way to 170 different practices that need to be put in place for a level five or an advanced cybersecurity program. Uh, so again, CMMC, uh, for those of you that support uh, DOD um, or DOD contractors, you're probably very familiar with CMMC. Um, it is uh, going to be a, a mandated standard, or at least that's what they're saying by uh, the end of the 2020 calendar year, um, it is expected to be mandated for all DOD um, contractors um, within the DIP, DIP to be at one of the levels. However, even if you're not supporting DOD or not working with the Department of Defense, um, this CMMC model is available for you, helps to define capabilities that need to be put in place, and again, can help you understand at least the things that you need to do to get started in your cybersecurity program, and then what you can do to progress as maturity increases. Uh, for your organization. Okay. The fourth cyber maturity um, standard uh, that I want to talk about actually is not a cyber maturity capability at all. Um, it, the NIST cybersecurity framework. So the NIST cybersecurity framework um, is not meant to be a cyber maturity model. Um, cybersecurity framework was actually created just to help us understand the key components of a cybersecurity program. But within that, uh, NIST wanted to help us understand that there are different ways in which you can implement a cybersecurity program. Uh, so they introduced what they call implementation tiers and implementation tiers uh, are simply they start at tier one um, identifying you know the th the you know partial what they call partial implementation or more of an ad hoc implementation but you can see that kind of how it goes along the lines of a process their tier three or repeatable um, process cybersecurity processes where we get into the policies and procedures kind of capabilities and then up to tier four where we're being adaptive uh, and improving our cybersecurity processes across the organization. Um, in addition to the process maturity um, going from tier one through tier four, uh, they do have capabilities um, uh, uh, identified within the cybersecurity framework simply that say, you know, how are you managing risk and do you have an integrated risk management program in your organization and the different practices that you should consider um, as you're going through the subcategories in the cybersecurity framework and how to implement them. So again, not meant to be a cyber maturity scale, primarily because if you look closely at the implementation tiers, they do overlap. Uh, there is inconsistency across the, the between them, but again, uh, that's purposeful, uh, and it's simply me meant to show as a way that organizations can identify cybersecurity capabilities in their organization and mature it up through, and not necessarily meant to be a discrete measurement factor. Okay, so um, with that, I uh, thank you for your time today. Um, and just, you know, as a reminder, there are the four implement our cybersecurity ca maturity capabilities out there from CIS implementation groups, the, the three point scale um, to CMMI cyber maturity platform that introduces a five point maturity scale, uh, very equivalent to the cybersecurity maturity model certification or CMMC. And then finally, uh, the NIST cybersecurity framework has capabilities or implementation tiers that help us understand how we can mature our capabilities um, as we progress up through those tiers themselves. Um, as always, if you have any questions or would like some more information regarding anything that we covered today, feel free to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Bye.